Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office. Urgh. The wall fitness made in China. Urgh. This is quite a heavy box, but I suspect it's not a an item of, you know, electronics here. This is going to be some fitness equipment because, of course, I've decided, well, I decided at the end of last year to do the Tough Mudder again this year. I must have been high on crack or the uh, electric shock therapy or whatever they call it at the end of the Tough Mudder where you run through and get hit by cow fences. Um, cow fence wire, you know, the electrics, electrics, this is ETs, explain that well. Um, decided me, I decided to sign up and I did and I thought I had more time to train to be honest with you I thought I had another two months to train and I haven't and the problem with these events is if you you can get good at running yeah just run around a bit do that do the running around a bit you can do that anywhere but getting good at swinging and supporting your weight and doing monkey bars that's really hard it's really hard unless you're willing to go hang out in the kiddies playground which Hopefully none of you want to do unless you're kids or have kids, um, but it's it's a bit weird as an adult to just go to the kiddies playground. I, sh I, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, why don't you take your kids to the kiddies playground, Andrew, and just be a parent for a change? Um, yeah, I could. Uh, you got me there. I'll raise my hand so I could do that. But I, I, you know, I decided I'm not going to do that, though. I'm going to go and buy a piece of fitness equipment that I'm going to try to hang on the wall somewhere in the back office that allow me to try to do a pull-up. Um, I know you can buy them for your door, but I don't really want to knacker any of my doors because I had them as a kid. Um, you have to screw them into the wooden frame and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. I, I just don't... I'm, I'm not having it. So this thing, though, apparently you bolt it to a suitable wall using this rather heavy looking plate. I mean, that's looking good. I mean, for the money, just over a tenner. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna break it, but I'm just trying to see how does the actual bars all connect? So it's got this really weird bubble wrap. Yeah, the super fine, super high texture density uh, bubble wrap. Let's have a look here. Oh, how did that happen? Get off. So it's supposed to look like that when you're done, which is two sticky out bars, and then the top bar is kind of just sitting on the top. Oh, okay. So uh, obviously you've got to make sure you measure out reasonably accurate, so you can have to sort of span this thing. I would suggest putting that bar on top and then putting them on the wall and marking those out. That would be my order. So I'm just not going to bother unwrapping these. I'm just going to try to shove the other end in the other end. I think. It's a pretty uh, simple solution. How do they make things like this though for you know no money at all? I think we must be outsourcing all of our poverty abroad. Some poor little kid's made this out. He's banged it out with a hammer. But that, yeah, that works, a couple of screws in. I mean, if this doesn't work, frankly, I mean, look at the welds on this. It's not going anywhere. If, you're, if you've broken this, yeah, and you've pulled out these fittings, which might not be the best sort of wall anchor type things, but they look pretty bloody good because look, I'll just show you how these work if you've not experienced these before. You know, you can get better ones, go to screw fix if you want, but as you tighten this nut, yeah, you're cranking on this nut, this um, chamfered bolt head pulls in and just pulls out these metal tabs big style. So if you're putting it into brick, I mean don't put it into an air brick or a, a air, you know one of those light concrete blocks, you want to put it in something reasonable. That's not going anywhere. So if you've made this, assembled it, put it up properly and you've still managed to sort of break it, I don't think your main problem is going to be fitness. I think your problem might be weight management. Um, so yeah, think about that. Think about that as, as one uh, someone who's weight management challenge to another. Um, if you're ripping pull-up bars out of the wall, uh, yeah, get get on the diet as well. I'm not saying don't do the pull-ups because they're bloody good and they're bloody difficult to do and they're probably going to be harder to do while you're heavier. So maybe you'll get the most benefit. Um, but yeah, just just bear that in mind. So uh, oh God. I'm just I, I can't believe I've just started assembly. I've got no intention of fitting this right now. I really don't. But it's like a, an addict. It's like if you buy an airfix kit. Can you just leave an airfix kit in the box? No. You've got to get in there. Urgh, look at that. That's not going nowhere. Nobody touched nothing. 
So uh, while I'm just doing this, you know, seeing as I uh, said I wouldn't, but I am, um, just sort of talk about, did you ever, um, you heard the news about that chap from Aliens and Terminator dying? I can't remember his name now. I'm, I feel really bad that I can't, but that's more of a sign of my age, not a sign of his forgetfulness. Um, he played Hudson in Aliens. He was in a Terminator movie, I'm sure. I don't think he was in The Abyss, because that was the other guy, Michael something, who's in all, all the other things. Um, but yeah, it's real sad. I found it real sad that, like, one of my childhood heroes had expired, and... I didn't really... It's weird. I wanted to know why. Oh, cool. Look, it even has the tool. I mean, that's that's pretty good value. I wanted to know why, but then I thought, do I really want to know? I th think it's... Do some things best left, you know, private? Remember them as they were. Game over, man! Game over! <laughs> um, and also, I remember now, he was in Predator 2, I think, because uh, everything was his specialty. That's my specialty! One more, come on. Mm. This is the most awkward thing, by the way, to do on the bench because I've got this other really heavy end now just flapping around. But I think, I think I can do it. I think I could do it. So yeah, special uh, prizes for anybody who can tell me his name in Predator Two. And just to sort of be clear, he wasn't the Danny Glover character; he was someone else. Um, what else was he in? He was in that TV show, I think, about Mormons where he had loads of wives. I kind of distinctly catch, remember catching him on something like that and was going, what's this show? And it was about wives and they, they had loads of wives. So I'm pretty sure, I think it was called Big Love because it reminded me of a Fleetwood Mac song. So there you go, it was in Big Love too. And that is it, that's constructed. Don't over crank these, there's no need to, you'll just crush the tube. There's not much to show here. So you can see here, I've just drilled out the holes. There's a little pile of mush. By the way, if you have this red brick, clean it up before it gets wet because it will stain. So I've got these sort of bolts here. It did say on the packet 8mm, but really 12mm is what I measured on these and it did seem to need a 12mm hole. So I'm just going to set those. And how you set them is just sort of get them into the wall like that. See that? Hammer them in. And that's it. You're pretty much good to go. As soon as the actual metal bit here you can see that black that sort of back bit there the collet is in flush you're in don't bother hitting any more beyond that and just repeat that for all four show you again how i do that that's the uh thing just like that slide that in give it a wiggle especially if the hole's a bit filthy still just tap that straight through one more time Not too hard in each tap, you don't want to damage the end of this studding. And that's it. So when you take this off though, be very careful because you could lose the bolt. So just make sure that bolt doesn't drop away when you unscrew this. Do that for all eight fittings, and then pop it on and then just sort of wind these on nice and tight. So I'm going to do that. I've removed all the nuts and washers and various things now of both sides. What you can do when you're doing this, before you remove the nut, if you've got a claw hammer, put a claw hammer underneath, just pull it out slightly and that will cause the stud to pinch in this collet and it'll jam it in a bit. So then you sort of reduce the risk of when you offer something up that you'll push this through and it'll fall into the wall cavity. So I'm gonna uh, offer this up. I'm not gonna be able to hold the camera while I do that, but once it's up, we'll, we'll tighten up in place. Just get your big washer on there your small serrated washer, because these don't have nylocks, fortunately. They just have regular nuts, but they just have these kind of serrated locking washers instead. Otherwise, it'd be very difficult to get these on. You can see there, the whole thing is actually pushed in a bit. It's, I didn't quite pull it out tight enough, so if you need to, just jam it out. It's again, harder with one hand, but just push on one of these washers whilst you put the nut on, just to keep it located while you get this on. I'm going to try one more time though. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. Yeah, I think it's going this time. That's it. And then once you've got those all on, get them all on hand tight first. And uh, yeah, excuse the camera work as I sort of bend down there. Get something like a socket or whatever comes in the kit, spanner, whatever you've got really because you want to just tighten these up so you can just get those on there like that. And just crank them on until they sort of go firm. You'll know when 
they're sort of firm enough when you can't really twist them anymore. I'm just going to go and crack on with all of these and then see how I get on with it. I just noticed though, I'm not going to be doing many chin-ups here because this is way, way high above this door frame and that's the ceiling. So if I want to do any chin-ups, I'm going to have to cut a hole and that's not going to be happening. <laughs> so there we have it, the finished bar. And just to show you, some of these uh, tightened up great. All the ones in the ends of the bricks tightened up well, like these two. But these two that are in the sort of middle portion of the brick, you can see they took quite a lot longer before they got tight. So you can see that there's a difference in the length of the thread. So that's kind of normal. If you can avoid the middle of the brick, do that because these are hollow, unless you've got engineering bri bricks or blocks where you are. So that's that. Now I'm gonna have to be able to pull myself up and I can see from where I'm standing on the floor. It's already a kind of a little leap of faith for me to even reach this bar. Interesting times. Ugh! My word! It is holding. Ugh. Thanks for watching guys. Leave comments down below. Bye bye.